we continue our Lenten journey by looking at the character of Caiaphas. While Caiaphas may not have a lot to deal with with respect to history, we know that he was the high priest during 18, the years of 18 rather, to 36 AD, having succeeded his father-in-law, Annas. Both characters would be in the Passion, but Caiaphas would be responsible for handing Jesus over to Pontius Pilate. His house was also the place where the plot to kill Jesus took place. It was in his courtyard that Judas would make the decision to hand Jesus over for 30 pieces of silver and eventually have Jesus murdered. It would also be in his courtyard where Peter would deny Jesus three times. It would also be in his house where the trial of Jesus would take place, as the Gospels of Matthew and John tell us. What is important to note, though, in the somewhat insignificant role of Caiaphas is a twofold concept. First, Caiaphas's life was irony. Why? Because while everyone around him, including him, appeared to be taking rational decisions to have Jesus removed, what rational decisions would this be? Passover was coming. They knew that Jesus was a problem. They knew that his teaching was a problem. They knew that the authority that he taught with was a problem. It challenged the authority of the Pharisees. And he knew that if Jesus was allowed to continue to do his work, the people would revolt against the Sanhedrin, which would cause the Romans to come in and the Sanhedrin would lose power in Jerusalem. So in Caiaphas' mind, his action to have Jesus arrested and then handed over to Pontius Pilate to be killed was the perfect rational plan. The irony of it all. Instead of choosing an action that he felt that the Roman authority would cut off their freedom, he chose to hand over the man who would give them true freedom. He chose to put the man who would give them the freedom they desperately seek on the cross. And this cross would become the symbol of true freedom. The second thing that makes Caiaphas very interesting for us to take a quick look at this week is this. Even though his actions were ironic, they were also part of God's divine plan. Even though he attempted to kill Jesus by convincing Pilate to have him crucified, his attempt at Jesus' downfall becomes the means by which our salvation is restored, the cross. As we approach this halfway point of Lent, my dear sisters and brothers, our attention turns now from this notion of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, while still maintaining all three of those. Our attention now brings us to this, to the culmination of the Lenten journey. Our eyes now need to go to the cross. And we have to understand that the cross for each and every one of us is part of God's divine plan. All of us will have to endure some sort of suffering if we want to attain the glory that the cross ensures. So how much of your own life do you attempt to do on your own versus succumbing to God's will the way Christ did and following his divine plan? Are we willing to accept the will of God in our lives? Are we willing to be open to it? Do we want to conform to God's will? If that's a no, what's holding you back today from conforming to God's will in your life? Is it pride? Is it self-image or self-glory? Is it fear, maybe even doubt in God himself? These emotions are real to the human heart. And Caiaphas allowed these emotions to stop him from recognizing true freedom in Christ Jesus. Do we want to be the same? <laughs>